Hello. Welcome to the last session of today, and I believe it's one of the last sessions of the uh, official summit. Tomorrow is only design summit, as I uh, think. Uh, so I'm happy you are still here, and it looks like you're not asleep yet. So it, I, I know it will be a hard thing with the last presentation here, but we try to keep you awake somehow. So we want to bridge a little bit between OpenNV and OpenStack, because we have the feeling that people have different understanding of what is the difference, or maybe OpenNV is just using OpenStack and adding a little stuff to it. So we want to explain what is the, the relation there, and is OpenNV just an extension there? So my name is Uli Kleber. I'm working with Huawei now since five years and based in Germany. And I'm uh, Huawei's um, TCT, uh, TSC member in, um, in OPNFV. I am also leading a project called Octopus for the CI pro uh, program in OPNFV. And my colleague here. Yeah, I'm Prakash Ramchandran. I started with Uli on the uh, OPNFV uh, when it started in somewhere in September of last year and then last last year and then uh, what we have done is uh, prior to that I was working with OpenStack so I have some background not so much but a little and I know it's a OpenStack is an ocean all of us know and just to start open platform for network function virtualization that is OPNFE acronym and OpenStack it's a stack which is open, hopefully, for infrastructure. So given these two terms, I will just reflect. We are in OpenStack Mitaka. And if you look at what essentially we are looking is we have domain, we have infrastructure domain for compute, for storage, for networking. And then we, these are all kind of a microservices. That is, they live by themselves. They don't share anything with anybody. The only way to share is through what they retain in their databases. Each one of them has individual databases and they, through the API calls, RESTful API, some one who is a tenant from, uh, from the provider side or from a user side, having an ID calls and once they call, then the question is, how do you tie these together? So there is a messaging bus, which is the AMQP. So that messaging bus is what helps deliver to the dashboard user or a client user, that is command line user. And so you can see the compute, the storage, the networking, uh, object and f you have block storage and object storage, both are required. Essentially, these are services. So essentially, you are looking at infrastructure as a service running from dashboard and being having an ID and endpoint to serve through the keystone which is the global module and images are there. So basically this is what the total service is. The pain point here is networking. Everybody knows it. So let me move forward and then bring you to besides OpenStack, what is there that we are talking about? And I think I should hand over at this time uh, having told what is OpenStack to Uli. Yeah, go ahead. So when we use OpenStack now for a telco environment, then we come with additional requirements. And some very famous one we put here on the, uh, uh, on the table, and many people know this FCAP stuff, which is fault management, configuration management, availability management, or automatic scaling things, performance management, security management, software management, all these things are something we might add if it's not there, but partly they are there. So these requirements are something from Telco is coming. So is OPNAV now just an extension of OpenStack adding these requirements? I believe not. OPNAV's role is a midstream project. So we do different things. In the top bubble there, 
I put a list of different components we are integrating in OpenStack, uh, in, in OPNFV. So, to build a platform for NFV, we need many things. We need OpenStack, and it's, it's the biggest component we have there, but we have also different things like virtual switching, like SDN controllers. We have three different SDN controllers we work with here. We have all these Linux components. We have DPTK. So these are components, building blocks. We do integration to build this platform. So OPNAV as an integrator, is that all? I think for the industry, it's a great achievement that we, in an open source activity, we do the integration of these components. And everybody who started to integrate an SDN controller with OpenStack knows that this is a, an effort uh, that takes some time. And providing that from an open source side, from one project to the community, is a big achievement. So, is OPNFV just an integrator? So we have two inputs there already. One are requirements, new features that we want to add to existing upstream projects. The other thing is getting multiple of these projects together. And then on the right side, I put another thing I named that use cases and scenarios. So this combination of different upstream projects we built to a platform, we have different variations there, depending on what we want to do in a certain network. So sometimes we don't need all the components, or some customers have certain SDN controllers they like better than other SDN controllers. So we have variants, and these different ways to build up the platform we call scenarios and test those. So this is another input of OPNAV. So OPNAV builds up from these different dimensions, and with that provides services to the ecosystem, or it provides an input to an ecosystem of the telco services. And who are those? It's the telco carriers, the network providers, but it's also the vendors that can use all these services. And depending on what we talk about, whether it's the scenarios or the integration work or the requirement work, these are different benefits people will have when they start using OPNIV. So what we want to do in this talk is we walk you through these different things and we show you in an high-level way, what is it OPNAV has provided for that? Yes? So many of you will know that we just, or it's not so just anymore, we have provided the Brahmaputra release, so all our releases are named after rivers and in the alphabet. So this Brahmaputra release was provided in the beginning of March. And we put a theme on that release. We call it Lab Ready. So OPNAV is still a pretty new exercise. So we don't have the feeling that the project is already mature enough that you can build a customer network on that in the telco area. It will take a little bit longer until you really can do that. But it is ready to be used in labs for whatever the carriers or the vendors need to do in the lab to, uh, to build their products. When we look what we did, we have th 30 projects of uh, OPNFV that participated in that release. Other projects were not ready yet. And it was about 165 developers doing the work. So it's not that small exercise what we uh, did there. And based on these scenarios, what I showed you, we provided this release. So we have four different installers that help you to bring 
the, the software on the target machines. We can deploy it in a virtual environment or on a bare metal. This is all, all, also against scenarios. And we have three different C SDN controllers uh, to be used in this network. Open code rail is a little bit behind still, but it will be there. And we have optional features that you can deploy or, or you can uh, leave them out to have more stability in the network. So the release, because of the, the nature of OPNFV, is not just a software package that you can download. It's different things that play together to help you in this lab work. So it's, of course, a target platform. The software image you will run to deploy your cloud. And in this software image, it will be the NFEI and the VIM components according to the Etsy architecture. But people have told that so much in, in this summit, so I won't do that again. In addition to that, we provide deployment tools. These are these four installers that you can use to deploy easily this integrated platform. And everybody who tried from scratch to install OpenStack on his computers, be it in a virtual or, or on multiple servers, it's a pain to do it. It's a lot of work. So we try to make that easier for our users by providing standard configurations where you can deploy that. So you can use a configuration guide to see how you have to set up your network and this, this environment. And then you can just download and start this thing and it will deploy on this standard configuration, will be, which is a, a lab with five servers, two payload nodes, three control nodes, so we can have HA of OpenStack, and a jump server, which is a server doing this deployment. Then, in addition to that, we provide a test framework. So you can start this to find out whether the stuff you have deployed on these machines is re really doing something useful. And you can check whether every change you do will still work and you, you can run VNFs on that. And of course, documentation, but uh, that should be uh, obvious that we have to provide these things. An additional thing OPNFE provides, which we don't put into the release, but it's also something very useful for the communities. We work on requirements. So requirements are not part of a target platform. So they are not directly related there. They will be something for the future. So we provide also requirement documents that are not part really of a release. And an additional thing is we have community labs so when you want to test something in the telco area, you usually need more computing power than you have at home. So we provide labs from the participating companies that community members in OPNFV and maybe also other people can use to do these NFE testing. And I think these are different dimensions of the stuff OPNFV is providing to the community. So OPNFV is structured into different projects, and these projects are very different in the in their nature because OPNFV provides these different dimensions of, of things to the community. So in, on the left side, these blue um, hexagons, they stand for projects that are somehow working on the integration on, or deployment or documentation, so all this infrastructure part. The uh, light green ones in the middle, these are testing projects. So they concentrate on either creating test cases, make them a run on that, or doing performance testing, or defining benchmarks, and things like that. Everything with what is connected with testing is done there. And the, the big part on the right side then these are requirement projects where we look at these telco requirements, F cups and so where we started and try to bring them into the upstream projects where still uh, things are missing. 
And in this list, I showed to you that OpenStack is a big part of that. It's 10 projects that where OpenStack is the major target of these requirements. But there are also very, a very big number of projects where OpenStack doesn't play such a role. So some of them work on multiple upstream projects, or some of them work on uh, upstream projects besides OpenStack. So here you see OpenNV is much more than just an extension of OpenStack. It's a, it's a midstream exercise with pro, which provides uh, multiple dimensions there. So let's go into a little bit more detail of that. So the, these requirements, when we start with the requirements part, those address different areas OpenStack or other uh, upstream projects are working with. A big part you can call its maintenance. It, or O and M, like some telco call it. So it's all about how do we do with, the, with faults, how can we recover from them, how can we report them, how can we repair, how can we make the, the platform more resilient so they, they will not break when, when a bug um, occurs, and, thing, and upgrade and things like that. Another area is networking. So Prakash all already said that networking plays a major part, and we have more, uh, a little bit more on that. Another thing is orchestration and the interfaces we need to provide to the higher level components in such an architecture. And the third area where we have to work is that a telco network is not placed in a single data center. And during this summit, we had uh, many talks about how we can work with multiple sites or multiple instances of OpenStack working together or breaking a data center into micro data centers, just the, the session we had here before. So these are the major areas we are working to. Maybe I should explain this RAS there. It's, ah, oh, help me. <laughs> so yes. resilience and then um, you have the uh, availability, availability and, and services. serviceability. So this other area, to, just to bring it also to this picture. <laughs> so I'll put it this, uh, uh, obviously uh, we work with carriers and Verizon has brought this in. Service assurance is mostly Intel is trying to address and resilience and availability. Availability is always 999, so, and resilience is being able to get, uh, you fall down, you get back, so that is the resiliency. So whatever happens, failures, you have to come back. That's the resiliency. And the FCAPs, as already Uli mentioned, this is important. That's why I say again and again, this fault configuration, then accounting, performance, and security. But then people have different, different, uh, A, they will add, add availability, and then S, they will add software. So essentially it covers the carrier gradeness which is required based on the various functions. So these two are, the, and we have been debating internally within the OPNFE as well as within the organization, we vendor community, and what should be our target? We started at Arno, which was more focused on continuous integration because we knew a lot of software are upstream, we just have to pull them, put that together, and yet build a reference which will be interface compliant with HC, NFE, and so, so on and so forth. But software so development is independent of that. They run faster than the standards can bring in. So we have to ensure that we are able to cement that. And so we struggled in the first Arno release. Then we came to Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra, now we have 21 scenarios, as he mentioned. Yes. Four. For, for each of the uh, three uh, installers plus the eight or nine which is based on fuel and fuel is part of obviously OpenStack but it doesn't have all that we need. So we are enhancing it. Then in Colorado we decided, okay, what do we do next? So we have a theme of net readiness. Uh, we would prefer to have carrier grade but even network is the biggest pain point 
and the challenge is how to make it network ready. And you had sessions from uh, at and on Gluon and Proton and uh, we are still dreaming, but uh, we need to engage with OpenStack to ensure that we plug in at the right place. And then we have Edge Cloud, which is another evolving piece uh, in the three-tier cloud. Instead of three-tier services, now we are looking at those things. And finally, we are also looking at mobile because mobile is king and video is king. That's what the traffic sits are. So our roadmap options are there, but this is not final. This is what we are thinking. And we want the feedback from all of you to help us understand how we go from here. So now we are at the halfway stage almost. We will just drill a little bit detail and I'll ask Uli to start with the maintenance. So just as an appetizer here for the, these maintenance topics, I, I think the most uh, successful projects we have brought in the area of, of requirements is the doctor project. And we had several uh, talks during the summit, so I don't need to talk a lot of it, but uh, this diagram is from doctor and shows how this notification flow goes through such a platform until the application gets notified about a, 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 a fault that has happened on a platform. The resilience, resilience and upgrade are, are the other areas there. Let me say a little bit about the upgrade area. What we need in the telco area is that an upgrade will be seamless for the services. So we don't need an upgrade that we will keep everything alive at any time. That's not what we need. We might even be able to shut down OpenStack for five minutes or 10 minutes. As long as all VNFs can operate during that time, an upgrade can be seamless for the services. Of course, after a certain time when we shut down the controllers for an hour, that will be a problem. And if we shut down the SDN controllers, it, the problem will occur earlier than these five minutes. So we have to look into the details. Where do we need which um, downtime requirements during an upgrade? And how can we make sure that we can deploy new services very quickly in such a network? So there the future will provide many, many new uh, requirements and mechanisms to be able to do so. Networking. So networking. <laughs> uh, networking is computing. We have this debate going on for years and years and decades and decades. So at this time, uh, when we start in the NFV reference architecture, we started with the WIM, which is OpenStack, 80%, let's say, started with that. But then networking is the key. So we had to introduce SDN controller as part of WIM. In fact, the first starting itself, we started with ODL. And then we said that at the same time, OpenStack was evolving. You remember, they had ML2, ML3 plugin, ML2 plugin, ML2, then plugin, then driver, then agent. And so you got umpty umpty number of pieces to tie together. And our drivers and the plugins, plugins also were thrown out sometimes. They were brought in in the neutron. So we had a, uh, advanced services. And so we ran it from Havana onwards. We have seen a lot of things happening. And in this moving working environment, we had to plug in the ONOS and ODL. So we started with ODL and we brought in immediately ONOS because uh, we need to have duality and multiplicity of so that uh, we are able to work with the plugin and the use cases actually drive them. So one simple use case, if I say SFC, service function chaining, that is one of the key pieces of at least for carrier grade and for the telco. So we talk of middle boxes, like we talk of firewall, we talk of load balances, and we talk of gateways for mobility, gateway for fixed network, then uh, VEPCs. There are number of VNFs or virtual network functions composed of multiple VMs or single VM. And OpenStack in its own neutron doesn't give all the flexibility we need. And this SDN controller will be able to do the underlay 
stitching for those service function chaining based on flow classification, based on the open flow, uh, whatever is supported and default is OVS. But default OVS does not help us deterministic way of doing which is the requirement for telco grade and therefore, we had to also there is a sync I think, uh, data sync issues and so these are all getting resolved one by one using this use cases. So, we have SFC, VPN, L3 VPN, L2, L2 VPN we were able to accomplish in Brahmaputra, but in Colorado we are shooting for L3 VPN and BGP VPN and then IPv6. So, some of the networking features which will help us service function chaining from ODL side of it as well as from the ONO side of it. So, these are the main uh, features we want to incorporate and these are uh, essentially we are trying to include them. We have scoped them, lot of gaps are there and it is not the question of gaps because OpenStack comes from totally IT centric, data center centric, east west north south traffic whereas for us it is more of a control plane separation, data plane separation and data flow that is the uh, throughput for the and latency. So, there are characteristics which are different for use cases and therefore, network is the biggest pain and hopefully we will be able to address with the moving target still we are seeing lot of disruptions here like today we heard about uh, we use support example, port support we use for SFC for service function chaining for network SFC whereas now we are talking of uh, router instead of top of rack switch we are talking of top of rack routers as Sean Collins put it you heard him and that is another disruption we are seeing. So, it is a work in progress hopefully we will be able to manage expectation and uh, deliver what we need based on the requirement and we will keep engaging with OpenStack in this. So, next one. Oh. What happened here? Yeah. So, now I will talk of only we want control plane data plane separation. So, data plane we want to have fast or throughput of the flows of different applications being either tunneled or straight away pass through. Now, that there is a limitation and because we want to build it on the cards that means, the server we do not want to change, but essentially we feel that there is a need for hardware abstraction to be able to separate out and that hardware expression this is DPAC is data plane acceleration promo, proposed by China mobile and they are working on it. They have uh, they, they want to do the packet processing, cryptographic processing and encapsulation decapsulation for the uh, traffic which is in the data plane and therefore, you find that there are multiple ways of doing it and that is their way of one way of doing either through hardware or without with abstracted with the drivers. And then on the other side we have uh, fast data stack which is uh, Cisco's way of if you look at the bottom it says Linux, FDIO and DPDK. So, DPDK is your compute acceleration and on top of it you have the uh, vector processing packet processing so that you can buffer and over the DPDK and then provide some kind of a API call honeycomb API what they call in the ODL and that being used by the ODL based implementation for fast uh, uh, data paths. So, this is what is happening. So, there are multiple ways of acceleration and we do provide diversity and there is no one vendor that will dominate. We have all vendors coming together and trying to standardize it. So, this is a good piece of uh, uh, global collaboration I put it because we have China mobile which is almost 8 times that of at and T's. So, you can see the need for them and there are a lot more to it ok. I have not even characterized power consumption, data center like cooling. So, there are many aspects to it. So, next one we will go and uh, I will just briefly say we have not reached the performance these are only requirements, but we know that given the best practices what we can do on a bare VM we should be able to do it in a VM as well as in the cloud and the goal is to make sure that you cannot do everything on a lab ready or a field ready just you have to have best practices, policies and all those will come eventually to get that there. So, I will just skip this and now this is important piece. 
this piece you can understand that when you have a network and you have underlay and overlay of course. So underlay you can have some kind of a graph and you have ionic which can do the stitching of that at the lower layer by installing the uh, computes and storages and all that uh, in traditional way. But when you go to overlay then you have to look of a service being translated into graphs. Generally most of these service can be modeled as a graph and so once you do model then how do you drive the policies through them? How do you create them? How do you get, so which one comes first? Is computes comes first or network comes? So somebody says no, no, not bound API of compute is important. Somebody says no, not bound of SDN is important. That's not true, it's a combination thereof. So everything can be under control if we f map our use cases as a models and as a logical model of the nodes and the links and then drop from top the services based on the flow classification and run through the graphs, help them drive that through that and the underlay, there is also tunneling aspect of it which we have to address right now, just not traffic, it's not packets, it's the bunch of packets put together with a signature of something we call it as S-flow, flow and so those are with IDs and all. So, that's why models and policies are important because you have local and global uh, separation and you can have policy at the global level and you have to fan it down to local based on the uh, what you call the uh, infrastructure domains or domains as we call them or maybe segments or there are many many definitions there I'll leave it to that slices and all. So yeah. we have to implement those policies and this is what we have projects in OPNFE like models, we have VNF forwarding graph, we have SFC, we have uh, copper, we have plenty, okay. So a lot of these are brought into picture to be able to provide that kind of service. I think I'll give it to... <laughs> yep, orchestration is, is another aspect, uh, very important. Uh, orchestration is something which was added to the scope of OPNFV only last November. So we are still on, on the beginning on adding this because in the beginning, when OPNFV was created, it was limited to the NFVI and VIM layer. OPNFV orchestration, we have to start at the OSS BSS layer and come down then to the data centers and infrastructure. The important thing there is to the life cycle management for both the VNFs and for the services we run. So I won't go in, into many details, but we will do similar things with the orchestration like we do in, in other areas, going for the diversity. So the last bullet here says mono options. So everybody knows there are different exercises now addressing orchestration in open source. We can start with what we do in OpenStack with a, a TACA project. But there are also other exercises like the Open O. Uh, we had a presentation this morning and also the OSM uh, project which runs under Etsy to create in open source um, solutions for orchestration. Also in this area it's important to have all these automation tools uh, where also uh, OpenStack is contributing a lot to. So this is an area OPNFE still has to address and we are in the beginning to define the projects which will work on these uh, topics. So, so on this slide I, I summarize once more after we talked so much about the requirements we are working on, the, the other aspects we are providing uh, to the communities. Pre-integrated scenarios and um, in the Colorado release we have defined 21 scenarios, all of them need to be tested in our release flow in our CI pipeline uh, to be able to, to define these and provide these to the ecosystem. And just uh, two examples, what could an, uh, a scenario be? Uh, these um, acronyms there, OS, no SDN, and so it, it means we combine OpenStack in this scenario, no SDN controller, no additional features, but HA. So we, we do an installation of OpenStack in, in, 
in a high availability mode. Or, as another example, combine OpenStack with Honors as SDN controller, install uh, service function chaining features, and the HA. So all these combinations lead to different things there. Then the testing framework. Our testing framework is based on the functions provided by OpenStack there, but we enhance those, Tempest and Rally and Robot. Then the community labs, also some information there. A few companies, and there are more, who provide these uh, labs on their premises and have the community work on this or run the CI pipeline on that. Another part, the, the OPNFE plug fests, and the first plug fest will happen in two weeks, not so far from here. A few uh, hours, you can go by car in Colorado. There we will start with interoperability testing of the OPNAV members, bringing products, bringing solutions of uh, OPNAV, and test portability there. It's a new exercise, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to see what we can achieve with these plug fists. And then we are working on a compliance and certification program. OpenStack has that as well. And I think for OPNFV, it's even more important to work on this compliance and certification. We have another slide on that. I think it's the next one. No, ah, one more. <laughs> yeah, let's do the compliance and certification first. Uh, we call this project working on that dovetail, which means uh, something uh, which uh, binds things together like this. Uh, it's still a working progress. So what we do there is we create a framework for this certification and verification of components that work with OPNFE or in an NFE environment to help the multi-vendor aspect of NFE to become reality. This we have, is, yes. <laughs> this is similar to what we have in OpenStack here, RevStack, and, and we run the capability metrics by modules by we have additional modules like hypervisor and we drive the use cases. We also have levels like we'll have core, mandatory, optional, etc. And then be able to uh, work on testing by module and ultimately certification can be by... Yes, it can ex be exercised by the OPNFV project. So, or we can exercise it by third party or by the vendors themselves. So. This is still under discussion how we can uh, do this certification program. So I think that's it. Let, let's skip uh, back to the CI yeah, shortly. CI. Yeah. So um, OPNAV provides a CI pipeline for our development. So we do automation with Jenkins, uh, like it is done in the CI programs in OpenStack. It, on one side, it's easier because we have one built for, for, for the OPNFV target platform, whereas in, in OpenStack, all the modules build themselves, then they are combined. Um, on the other side, we have the complexity with these scenarios and have to run that. So we run a Master Jenkins program on, in the Linux Foundation Lab, who is our host. And we run then the slaves on all the community labs and have the dashboard as, as you know it by that. The uh, CI pipeline will go then to, to continuous deployment via the installers and automatically uh, install the target platform on one of our labs and also automatically start the testing. So it's a, it's a pipeline from the, the CI, the CD and the, the continuous testing. And also, the, this tooling will, will be a good thing to provide for the community. So save you for the time. We have a few <laughs> minutes. Maybe you can ask a couple of questions. I think at the end of the day, uh, everybody wants to run out. We are ready to shoot to the door. But you are welcome to ask a couple of questions, and we will answer. Antwar. <laughs> yes, thank you for the interesting presentation. Uh, my question would be, are OpenNFV versions and OpenStack versions related in any way? They are. So Brahmaputra is based on the Liberty release. Arno was based on Juno. So we take, uh, take stable releases from the upstream projects, 
for this integration effort because it, it provides for us a more mature basis to do this integration work. The Colorado, we have not done the uh, final decision, but on my opinion, it should be based on Mitaka. And there is a six months cadence anyway. So we follow the six months cadence to accommodate as many upstream as they can be accommodated at the stable release. Thank you. Go ahead. If you have any local changes, um, will you release it? Uh, will you upstream it before you release it, or uh, will the release have some local OPNFE specific changes, say, you know, some neutron or uh, some other project? We always work first upstream. Upstream, upstream, first, upstream. upstream first is a principle there. Okay. Uh, quick question about orchestration. Um, does that, I, I saw an FVM there, but does that in scope of the orchestration piece? Orchestration, what is that question? Uh, so you said orchestration there, got added there? recently okay. to... Yeah, um, orchestration, uh, yeah, we, we do support several tools, like you have Puppet Chef, Ansible, Salt, which are just the tools in themselves. But then actual orchestration occurs based on what the OSS, BSS drive. Yeah, my question is about VNFM. So are you going to have... Yeah, VNFM support? options we have right now, we are not finalized. Tacker is one of them. And then the possibilities are open. Oh, open is a project which has been uh, brought under Linux Foundation. OPNFE is also a project under Linux Foundation. Um, what it means is that OpenO, which is uh, initiated by China Mobile and AT&T, they are working to get some kind of a orchestration at the level of VNF manager as well as NFVO orchestrator in reference model. Mm -hmm. The Tacker deals currently with VNF manager and that deals with the Tosca and templates and all. And there is a requirement which is fanning up saying that we also need to have Yang modeling and Tosca modeling combination, maybe top down, bottom up types. Mm -hmm. So SDN controllers currently mm -hmm. are supporting only the Yang modeling like ODL, ONOS is still trying to get native Yang modeling. So you are going to have some uh, uncertainty at this stage as what yeah, eventually we will get. But it. the question was was about VMware there. So VMware, we, we are open no, no, source. No, no, oh, oh, <laughs> no, no it's right. just because you talked about orchestration being added recently. I just wanted to clarify that the VNFM function yeah, VNFM. Ah, yes. is in Not scope. VMware. Yes. So yeah. the VNFM function is in scope then. Yeah. Yes. VNFM. Mano has the scope for VNFM, NFEO, mm -hmm. both the service side, resource side. Mm -hmm. And at the Vim layer, we deal with all the SDNs and also. And can we, can we and expect anything in Colorado? Colorado, we are not seeing uh, anything no. at this time except for testing using Tacker, testing using uh, Domino. There is a policy yeah. a template distribution, uh, and we we don't have certainty at this June time frame. Come Open all gets ready. By the time we go into D, yeah. at that time we'll have a decision. There are no decision mm -hmm. at this time. I think, is there any oh, question? Yes, yes. one, one uh, question. Yeah. What is the process for um, engaging the open NFE like Three. group? Is it a mailing list and yes. IRC? Okay. How do I ask for features or report bugs? So we have mailing lists. We have a, a wiki where you can, can read and find out what is working uh, uh, there in the different projects. We have IRC meeting. It's pretty similar to OpenStack okay. in the working mode there. Do you ever so, have working conference sessions like where the yes. team, where we yes. can yes. So It depends on the project. Some, some projects don't have meetings at all. Okay. Uh, some projects have pure IRC meetings. Some projects have voice meetings. Some have the meetings at two time zones because we are all over the world. Over. Okay, are those listed on the wiki? Yes, you find uh, it in the wiki. Okay. wiki.openfe.org yes. and you. then slash. And and you don't need to be, uh, so, so OPNFE has a bunch of m member companies, mm -hmm. but you can join the work in OPNFE even if you are not a member. Okay. So it's what, very What is the difference there. between someone who is a member? Or not Individual a member, member like versus platinum, funding. silver, and associate member. Okay. So platinum is the top tier, and then you have middle tier, which is the yes. silver, okay. and then we have the associate members like universities and all, and individual contributors, they are yeah. most welcome anytime. Yeah, so, you, so if you have anything, call us mm -hmm. or yeah. send us a mail to uh, info at 
We, we are happy for, for, for everybody we'll happy joining. To, uh, okay. so, so everybody who wants to, to contribute there, of course, needs to sign some contributor agreement. And if you are in a member company, it's easier because then your company already has signed for you and you just has, have to click something simple in the internet uh, at Linux Foundation sites. Uh, but if you are uh, doing that on your free will or so without a company behind that, you just have to read a little bit more. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have come to the end of the day. You don't have any questions. Or I think we should wind up gracefully and yes, hopefully I, go and enjoy your... Let's show once more the, uh, the yeah. email addresses, so if you want to... Yeah, if you want anything, here is the website wiki.openfe.org as well as you got www, which has got the marketing material. Wiki is the right place for you to well, get into for, uh, for the technical. And then you have uh, our email IDs. So Auli and feel free uh, to contact us if, if you have more questions or want to join. Thank you and enjoy your evening.